Okay. Define insurgency, please. That is a group living within us, living among us, armed, organized, and out to get us. Is that it? The key word there is organized, meaning that there's an actual factory, for lack of a better word, for this problem. There's an infrastructure that needs to be dismantled. And so for me, when I look at how we're fighting this, I think back to World War II would be as if we declared war on the kamikazes and said, well, how do we tackle the kamikazes? No, you target Japan. And so to me, the insurgency, the Islamist insurgency, is the responsibility of foreign governments that are sending in tens of millions of dollars to build that infrastructure in Europe, specifically specifically in Spain. So you believe that this insurgency exists in the United States? That's what the Clarion Project's all about. You've Absolutely. identified it, right? Absolutely. Okay, if you've identified it, you know it's there, what are we going to do about it? The authorities, not you, what are the authorities going to do about this? Well, citizens can do a lot also, but the strategy would be how do you dismantle the networks, the ideological factories? And so for an example of that would be for how do you cut off the foreign financing of nonprofit organizations, including houses of worship, that are getting money to promote Wahhabism from Saudi Arabia, Muslim Brotherhood from Qatar and Turkey. Well, you can, can you? I think you can. I think it, well, it? I think you can if you change how we go about it. So, for example, I think most people would agree uh, that you wouldn't want nonprofits getting money from state sponsors of extremism, right? And we have a list of state sponsors of terrorism. We don't have a list of state sponsors of extremism. You put foreign governments on that list, and you say people cannot get nonprofits cannot get money from those promoters of extremism because. That's what the money's going to do. Okay, that's step one. What about surveillance of this insurgency, which you claim is active in America? Right, that would be an additional step. That's good for intelligence gathering, basically saying if you're connected to a radical movement or you're expressing support for the radical movement as opposed to illegal activity, then there can be surveillance and well, investigation we're doing that. into you. Surely we're doing that. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. I, I do a lot of training of law enforcement, and particularly on the local level. There have been many times where I've just gotten from Google searches information about a radical imam somewhere or one of these radical Islamic compounds somewhere. I've educated police in the area, and they didn't even know it was there. So there's a massive intelligence sharing problem going on, and I've heard time and time again uh, people saying, well, it's not evidence of criminal activity, so we can't launch an investigation. If we're at an investigation stage, we can't justify further resources or trying to arrest someone for this, even though you can make the argument a lot of this is sedition, which is illegal. But you need a lot more money, a lot more resources to, resources to carry out the surveillance that you're talking about. Right, especially a when you're competing more. with money coming in from overseas. That's why I think you need to cut off that money. So, for example, in Spain, in 2011, there was an intelligence report from Spanish intelligence that leaked to a European paper that said that in Spain alone they had a hundred mosques with radical imams and that their words parallel societies were forming of a radical nature. That is scary. That's, is that's really something to hear. All right. Uh, Ryan, thanks for joining us as usual. I'm sure you'll be back soon. Thanks very much. Appreciate it.